Next, Dr. Haller is going to show us how to set up a treatment plan, how to find the swath width, or how wide the herbicide is being dispersed. Also, he's going to show us how to determine the number of trips through an acre and how to find the time it takes to make these trips. I've already drawn it up here to save a little bit of time, but here is our original outline of the acre. And you have to determine how uniform a coverage you want to uh, put out in that acre. Do you make one trip through it with the airboat or do you go ahead and, and make several trips through it? When you calibrate, or actually are in spray operations, you obviously don't go over the same path twice as this would double the herbicide concentrations in the water. Even though aquatic herbicides are essentially all water soluble, they will diffuse and spread out in the treated waters, but the objective of good herbicide application and calibration is to spread the herbicides as evenly as possible. So when applying aquatic herbicides for submerged weed control, how far apart do we run the boat paths to apply the herbicide in a reasonable time period yet in a uniform manner? Experience has shown that we can skip a width and a half of the airboat, in our case about seven feet. The backwash of the boat and the diffusion of the herbicide in water soon results in a uniform application. As you have already noted, the boom we are using in submersed application is six feet wide with four drop hoses. We expect the herbicide to be distributed in the backwash of the boat out an additional three and a half feet on each side of the boom. Thus, our swath width will be six feet for the boom plus three and a half feet on each side of the boat for a total swath width of 13 feet. We know our swath width is 13 feet. Now how many trips will it take us to cover the width of our acre? Simply divide 209 feet, the width of our acre, by our 13 foot swath width. And this gives us a total of 16 trips, or 8 round trips, to cover the area uniformly. Okay, we're out at our measured acre right now, and, and we're going to go ahead and put our hoses over the side for our submersed weed treatment, and we will be then going ahead and timing our, our uh, the complete one circuit of the eight circuits we're going to do up and back, and uh, we'll determine how many seconds that's going to take us, and we can plug it back into our calculations with our gallon per acre and figure out uh, how many gallons we're going to have to use, the herbicide uh, water ratio, which we'd normally be using, and uh, they give us the figures we need to go ahead to complete our calibration for the submersed treatment. Excellent, good steady speed. Everything worked really well there. I think we got our width just exactly right. And uh, our timing on that was one minute and 22 seconds. It's gonna, one minute and 22 seconds is 82 seconds. So that's what we'll use in our calibrations and in our calculations. Now that we've been out in the field, we got everything caught up. Uh, we know our unknown numbers and we can come back here and, and figure out now exactly how we should mix our herbicide water ratio and our total herbicide mix. Uh, recalling now as we measured the output of the pump, our pump output in gallons per minute was four gallons per minute. Uh, then we went out into the plots and we measured how long it will take uh, to make one round trip in our one acre plot and that worked out to 82 seconds. So now what we have to determine is how much total mix are we going to put in this plot uh, in the total time it takes to treat the plot and we can come up with our final mix. So we come back up here and our time that's going to take us to treat, it takes us 82 seconds to make one complete round trip. And the reason we did a round trip was in case the wind direction was either behind us or in front of us on one of the trips. So uh, we do eight of them. We already determined because of our spray boom and the way we're going to do it, it's going to take eight round trips. So we multiply 82 seconds per round trip times eight round trips gives us 656 seconds. Now we need to determine how many minutes that is. So we'll divide 656 seconds by 60 seconds in a minute. It was out to 10 minutes and 56 seconds, or let's round it off to 11 minutes to cover the entire acre. So now we know the two things that we really needed to set out, that we set out to know. That is our pumps and gallons per minute and how many minutes it's going to take to treat that acre. So let's go over here and figure out, all right, how much total mix do we have to have in the tank? Well, at four gallons per minute, and it's going to take us 11 minutes to cover that acre, that comes out to 44 gallons of total mix per acre. So that's the total amount we're going to put out, and it's going to take us about 11 minutes uh, to cover that acre uh, for the hydrilla or the submersed uh, weed treatment. So our herbicide, and we go to the label, and of course we've already read the label, and it says we need to use two gallons of herbicide 
per acre. So all we have to do now is take 42 gallons of water plus our two gallons of herbicide and that gives us our 44 gallons and that's what we'll mix in the tank right now and we'll put it out uniformly in that acre and hopefully when we make our eight round trips all of our herbicide runs out as we make that last trip or that last run by that pole. All right, let's remember now that uh, things may not come out perfect, and of course we're using water for our calibration. We're not using any herbicides in that total mix. Um, and as you're, if you add additives to it, you've got to calibrate with those additives, but we're using a water-soluble herbicide which does not change the viscosity of the water. If you're out there and putting your water in for your calibration run, and uh, we'll go to the, uh, the, the fictitious plot here again. Um, as you're running through here and putting your 44 gallons per acre uh, of water out, you can check your, your time. Every time you make a round trip, it's supposed to take you 82 seconds, if you recall. And then you also need to be watching your uh, amount of volume of your total mix left in, in the tank. When you get on your end of your fourth run, you should have just 22 gallons of mix left in your tank, and it should have taken you about five and a half minutes to get halfway through that plot. So there's little checks that you can use uh, on the way through here. Now, obviously, if you get to the very end of your run and you've got a gallon or two left over in your pump system, it may be because the pump wasn't level or just wouldn't pick it up that low, uh, but you're real close if you're within two gallons, and we really won't worry about that. However, if you get to the end uh, or, or, or ran out uh, two trips ago, then uh, you need to try and figure out well, what's going on here. And there are some things that can change, um, and that is your boat speed will change uh, with the weight that you've got in the boat uh, as you pump the mix out of the tank. Your boat has a tendency to go a little faster. Uh, also, if the wind picks up, you may have to uh, correct for that. And you also want to make sure your pump, you got to keep that running at a constant speed and pressure. So there are things that will happen out here uh, that, that you need to be aware of. So that's why a good applicator, he pays attention to how much time it's taking him and how much material is left in his tank. Uh, and that way he can come up with just a, a gallon or two or three left in a tank here at the end. Uh, if you're off a significant amount, then you better go back and check on some of your figures, check your gallon per minute output, and recalibrate using just water.